Hello everybody, thanks for joining me once again. Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different to normal, and not necessarily Psytrance related, but uh, something that can be useful for all of us. So we're going to be looking at making unique drums. So, to start with, here's an example of just a very basic drum loop. Okay, and then here's my unique layer of drums to go with it. Okay, and together they sound like this. Okay, so as you can tell, they give a lot more character and just general interest to the beat. So let's take a look at how we can do something similar. Okay, so the first step is to make a really strange noise. Just take a synth that you like and just go crazy with it and make a really, really strange sound. To save some time, I'm just going to go and pick one of the presets from my Vital Psytrance preset pack. I'm going to go with Static Bubbles. Okay, so I'm just going to make a nice long note. And we can make a choice whether we want to have these, the, the results all be in a particular key or not. So if you do want them to be in a particular key, uh, then I advise using the pitch snapping in Vital or something similar, so that you end up with only things that are in key. But we're gonna go with that for now. So I'm just gonna go with a G. And this patch has a lot of pitch manipulation, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about the actual key, but the octave should be low. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Perfect, right now, Let's add some automation. Or even better, let's just do it randomly because I'm lazy. Okay, so now hopefully we should have a really, really bizarre morphing type sound. Okay, and then let's just double that so we've got a really nice long one. So now what we're going to do is we can either leave it as one long note and that's fine but it might not work out quite as well and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to use autoplay from Altar of Wisdom and you can find this in the link in the description. Just going to set this up to trigger some notes for us. Okay so now we should have slightly rhythmic type sequence. Perfect. Right, so all we need to do now is freeze it. And now, I'm just going to make a new channel and drag the audio onto it. Okay, and now we need to right click on our new audio and go slice to new MIDI track. And you can change the way it's going to slice it up. That's fine. Uh, if you do too long a piece of audio, it will complain. So. Also, it makes it awkward to uh, go through all these different hits. So using sort of eight bars or so is plenty usually. Okay, so now we have ourselves an instrument that can perform all these weird and wonderful little hits. Now, by default, they will repeat themselves. So, if you don't mind, 
then leave it as it is. But we can use these loop length and loop compress knobs here to control whether or not it will loop. So let's just turn down the loop length. And now we just get one instance of each hit. And personally, I quite like to put a reverb and an OTT on these hits. For some reason, it always sounds good. So let's find a nice cheap reverb. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and now let's go for an OTT. Okay, and now we can just draw in notes, record them out, and save them as a library of unique drum hits. Okay, so if you like what you've got, just render them out. But we can also play with some of these parameters here to get some different things happening. So the start offset can often be really, really interesting for these. We can start getting little snap type sounds. We can turn our loop length back on. And by turning the loop compressed down when the loop length is up, we can get kind of robotic feel. And if we turn it all the way down on the loop compressed, we start to get a clear pitch, which is something you probably want to uh, render out so that you can correct the pitch for your track. So, another thing we can do to make truly bizarre percussion is go on our audio that we recorded, set it to texture. It should start on beats usually by default, although it does depend on how you have it set up, but go and click on texture. And now, perhaps even turn the grain size up. It doesn't really matter how you have this. It's going to sound cool anyway. So now, let's right click on it and go to Slice to New MIDI Track. And from here, we can go to the mappings. So click on any of your slices and go map. And then I suggest that we delete all of these attack values. We don't need these. If you do decide that you want those, then you're going to have to get rid of a different value or use a max for live device to control this. But for now, I'm going to go unmap. And now I'm going to go into the controls for one of our slices. And where it says transpose, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go map to attack because we know that isn't attack anymore. It's just an empty macro. Map to attack. And then right click and go map to all siblings. Though this is a options.txt add-on I've done here. So if you're on Live 10, you might need to go and change this yourself. Just look up options.txt, map to all siblings. I'm sure you'll find it. Otherwise, if you're on Live 11, I believe this has been added natively. So if you are on Live 11, uh, do let me know if they've added that. Okay, so now with this knob, we should be able to control the pitch of all these hits. So let's let it play on its own to start with. Okay, so it sounds like it should. Now, let's have a play with this pitch. Very cool. So, what I suggest you do is record in some automation of you playing with that.
Okay, and now let's render this out. And let's make it a bit louder. And now we can start the whole process again with our newly altered audio. We can just right click on it, slice to the MIDI track. And again, we have created a whole new set of bizarre percussion so sounds. Could do with being a bit louder. This is why I often like to use the OTT because these sounds sometimes need a bit of push. Some sounds more readily usable than the others. But as you can see, we've created some really interesting sounds. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. If you did, then please like and subscribe. If you're not already, please go and join my Discord server. You can find the links beneath. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.